Now I want to explain how the ggplot approach to grammar graphics actually produces these sorts of visualizations. And that concerns two concepts, aesthetics and jumps. So a crucial element of ggplot2 is that plots operate on so-called aesthetic mappings. And it seems like when you first come to learning ggplot2, it seems like quite a sort of unusual concept. So I think it's one of those things where I can tell you what it is, but actually the examples are going to illustrate much better what aesthetic mappings are. But in any case, um, an aesthetic mapping here, I've, I've included the one that we had on the, on the previous uh, slide, which is here AES just stands for an aesthetic. I've then got X equals population, Y equals the count of suicides, and then the color is sex. And this is an example of what's called an aesthetic mapping. Effectively, it associates aesthetics with values for each of your data points. And aesthetics, they are characteristics that control how potentially your data can look. Essentially, they're, they're characteristics which other things called joms take and then produce visualizations based on them. So here, this aesthetic mapping, what it does is it associates the horizontal position of data points with the population size and it associates the vertical axis with the count of suicides and then the color of points with sex. And so effectively what it's doing is it's just going through each of your rows in the data set and it's producing a sort of mapping of each of those to these particular aesthetics here. There are many types of aesthetics in the ggplot framework, such as for example, the shape and size um, and joms, as I said, control how aesthetics are displayed. So to illustrate how aesthetics work, I want to consider a task of where now we want to plot the data and we want to color it by country. So imagine that I wanted to do that in the traditional way. Well, what I would have to do here is I'd have to effectively have, so I've got five countries in this particular data set, I'd have to have five plot commands, essentially one after the other one. And I'd have to make sure that for each of those individual plots, I was selecting the right data. So I'd have to have that data in a kind of wide format, really. In the ggplot way, that's really easy to handle if I've got my data in the long format, because all I then do is I just say color each point according to the country. And so what ggplot effectively does under the hood is it goes through and country here is a column. It just goes through, it works out how many countries there are, it creates a mapping of each of those countries to a particular color, and then it plots it. And so I've only had to write a sort of short command here to accomplish a relatively powerful visualization. So next imagine that if instead of plotting each country a different color, I want to allocate a different shape to each country. So here, all I do is I change my aesthetic to be shape equals country, and then ggplot does all the rest of the work for me, and now what I've got down the bottom here is I've got a visualization where each different country has a different shape associated with it. And I've got a, a sort of legend that's produced for free here. And again, if I wanted to do this in the traditional way of plotting, again, that would require five uh, plot commands, one after the other one. I can also do other things than just plot the data. So I've added in this other thing here, which is John Smooth, which is a John, which we'll come on to in a few seconds. And now, Effectively, what I've got is I've got a different regression for each of the different countries in my data set. And that's because I've defined this aesthetic in the sort of base call to ggplot, which has then been inherited by the two joms that I have here. Jom point, which just plots uh, a different point uh, for each of the different rows. And jom smooth, which here I've told it to produce a linear regression model. So now, because color has been inherited by each of these two different joms, then effectively jom points, it allows different points to have different colors, and jom smooth draws a different regression line for each of the countries and colors them accordingly. If instead I wanted to do an overall regression where instead of plotting one regression line for each of the countries, I did that for all the data, then effectively all I need to do is I take color equals country from the base aesthetic here and I use it only where I want it to be used. So here I put it in the John point John. 
And so now John point only is, is the only John here which is going to do things according to country because whilst the base aesthetic, uh, whilst the base quarter ggplot has an aesthetic if I had colour equals country here that would be inherited by all the other geoms or, or most of the geoms, then here because I've defined it in a subsequent geom then it's not inherited by any of the other ones. So, so geom smooth the only aesthetics that that inherits are the population count and the count of suicides. And so now it doesn't really know about country John Smooth, and so it just plots a single regression line here. So I've been talking in passing about Joms. So what are they? John Point and John Smooth are both geometrical elements, which are, is abbreviated as Joms, that are used to represent data. So here they both take the same X and Y variable and they use it to produce a very different visualization. So John Point draws a kind of scatter plot and John Smooth draws some sort of regression line. There are many other types of Joms. For example, there's John Line, which draws a line, John Histogram, John Violin, John Rectangle. And there's a rich, uh, a rich combination, a rich zoo of Joms that are available to you in the ggplot package. To illustrate what Joms are, I want to provide a really simple example that I borrowed from the ggplot2 book. So imagine that I've got this data set that looks like this. I've got an X variable, I've got a Y variable, and I've got a label for each of those different rows, for each of the different data points. So how can I visualize these data? So here, imagine that I've called my data, I've called that object a data frame that I'm calling data underscore df. So that's the first argument to, to the ggplot command. And then I've got an aesthetic where the first element is the x variable which gets plotted on the horizontal axis and then the y variable which gets plotted on the y axis. And then here I've also added another aesthetic which is label. I've added this command here which is theme which don't worry about, basically it's to control how the plot looks. But then the only other thing that I've included is John Point here. And John Point, as we've seen, that draws a scatter plot. Notice that John Point hasn't done anything with the label here because some Joms don't really know to handle some different types of aesthetics. So John Point doesn't know how to handle this kind of character label here. So the only thing John Point does is it draws points. However, if I change that John to be John text, then the points here get replaced with the actual labels themselves. So I get the text labels A, B and C and they get plotted at the corresponding X and Y values. So notice the only thing that I've changed if I go back from this slide and the previous one is I've changed John point to be John text and I've got quite a different visualization here. I can make another change to my visualization. Instead, uh, I use John Cole here. And what John Cole does is it creates a kind of bar plot at each of the different X values where the, the, the height of it is given by the Y value. Notice again that John Cole isn't using the label here, so there's no character label which is being displayed. I can also change John Cole to John Line, and I get a line through all of my X, Y points. Again, it's not using the label aesthetic here. I can also layer John. So I have John Line, and then on top of that, I add John Point. And so what we get here is we get a line for our points as well as the individual points themselves, which is produced by John Point. There's also another John, which is known as John Jitter. And what that does is it effectively adds a random bit of X, Y Jitter to your point, um, which is particularly helpful when you're trying to visualize big data sets where a lot of the data may be on top of itself. I can also include other combinations of John. So here what I've done is I've included a linear regression line between the data, which is defined in my data frame, and I've actually displayed geom jitter. So I've added a kind of jitter to each of my points. But note that the geom smooth here, it creates a regression line using the actual data. It's not using the jittered data, if you like. I can also use sort of more elaborate geoms here. So I can use geom polygon, which unsurprisingly what it does is it draws a polygon whose edges or who its corners are the individual data points. Importantly, for some of the joms, the order of layering actually matters. So here, what I've got is I've got John Point, which is my first John that I'm plotting, and then I've got John Smooth. And because of that, 
I actually, so remember that John point, it plots a scatter plot and John smooth produces a regression line. So here, because I plotted John smooth last, the regression line gets overlaid on top of the data. Whereas if I reverse the order of those two things, then effectively what I get is I get a regression line which is being, which is underneath the data. And so for some jobs that sort of ordering matters. A short note, which is something which is a slightly different topic, is that it's very easy to change the scales on the axes using ggplot. So here all I've done is I've added scale x square root and scale y square root, which changes each of these different axes to be on the square root scale. So notice that I'm not going to go into any sort of detail here, but it's very quick to typically make these sorts of changes to your axes using ggplot. You can often do it kind of subsequent to the actual plot itself, which is really handy because it means that you're more agile. So we don't have to change the kind of base plot command as you do in some languages. It's just really simple using the ggplot framework to do it after you've produced a given visualization to improve it.